Hello, and welcome back to the Aimless Electron. I thought I'd do a quick video on this audio amplifier circuit that I want to build. I had a, a need, or at least a want, to power these Logitech speakers that I used to have the amp for, which was part of the subwoofer. Don't have that anymore, and they won't just run by themselves off the computer's headphone jack or the audio out on the sound card. So it actually needs to be amplified. I also had these chips called STA540 that I'd bought from uh, SparkFun a long time ago. They're little quad amp packages and you can bridge them together to make uh, twice, you know, get twice the wattage out of them. So you can have dual amps getting twice the power than the quad amps. Anyways, got that working on a breadboard. I'll go through that and how the circuit's set up and then we'll take a look at perf boarding it. And the whole point here is just to use parts that I had lying around. So hopefully this is a pretty easy project for anybody else that may want to do this. Anyways, let's take a look at the circuit. Here we have the circuit I was talking about. You'll notice it's pretty simplistic. That's because this chip takes care of just about everything for you. So I'll run through the circuit and explain what I've done here. Shouldn't take more than a couple minutes and then we'll move on. First thing I have is the headphone jack connector. It's just a 35 millimeter stereo connector or 3.5 millimeter stereo connector going through transformers. And the transformers are there to isolate this circuit electrically from whatever the audio source is, be it my computer sound card. And that way, if there's some kind of short here, it can't feed back and blow up my computer sound card or whatever is pushing it. Also, it avoids a ground loop where I was getting a lot of noise from before. So putting this in here, instead of having these connected directly to ground, I eliminate that loop, don't have any noise. Really great. Next, I have the normal filtering caps. You can use a bigger value if you want. The 0.1 seem just fine for this uh, application. This is just to make sure you don't pass any DC through. Next, if you look at the chip, you can see I have them bridged on their connector, connections, like I was saying, because this actually has four amplifiers inside of it. And on the outside, or the output, these are bridged across the speaker instead of the speaker going from the output directly to ground. That also means that the output between these two pins is 180 degrees out of phase. Something you may want to watch out for if you're using this in its quad mode instead of its dual mode. On the power coming in, there's two power pins. I have just a simple 0.1 microfarad ceramic cap on both of those. Then over here we have the standby pin. Now the standby pin needs to be driven high for this thing to be on, but it has to be pretty low current that it's, that it's sinking. So I have a 100K resistor in there. Also, this 10 microfarad cap is to keep down any weird noises like popping or whatever if you do implement this pin to be able to turn it on and off. Down at the bottom, just normal connection to the ground and then this filtering pin that helps filter the, no the power coming into it. That's why we have a 100, cap, 100 microfarad cap on that pin. The circuit in green over here is something I didn't implement. That's why it's in green. This is a diagnostics out pin, which means it can drive a load. And you could put a, a just a simple LED on that running through a resistor so it can indicate, say, if there's a short or if there's a, an overload thermally or something. Uh, also, I, I want to make note that this can easily drive between 2 and 16 ohms as far as speakers go. Uh, I wrote down 4 to 8 because that's what I was testing it against. I no notice I didn't do any impedance matching or anything with the chip itself. That's fine. This chip is built for this. The final little part of our circuit here is filtering, just main filter cap on the power rails, 100 microfarad. Anywhere from 100 to 1,000 is fine, depending on how noisy your supply is. And then a little power indicator across the rail, which is just another LED through a 10K in series, just to eliminate some of the, uh, the current or reduce the current. Power-wise, I just want to let you know I'm running this off of 9 volts, and I measured it to draw somewhere maxing at 2 amps, maybe not quite that much, but it's just something to be aware of. We'll go look at the circuit on the breadboard next, and then we'll put it together on a perf board. Here's the breadboard, and uh, before we go into everything that's on here, I want to talk about this chip for just a second. This is the chip we'll be using, the STA540. If you look at the pins, you can see that they're staggered. Well, they're not staggered in such a way where they're 0.1 inch apart. So I actually had to take one of these chips and slightly offset the pins. It's a little hard to see, but I had to bend each one a little bit so that at least one of the pins would line up. That way it can plug right into the board. Now right now I'm going to use this pin without a heat sink and plug it in just like this. 
I do have this one built up with the heat sink. These things do get hot enough. I mean, you're dissipating around 18 watts, which is a lot of heat for just that chip. Happen to have these extruded aluminum heat sinks lying around and this chip package does fit in there quite well. Unfortunately, it's tall enough at the bottom where these pins wouldn't interact with the board or sit in the board, so I had to solder on little chunks of wire. No biggie. I can still use this when it's on a breadboard. On the circuit itself, I want to go through some of the components. Again, some of this stuff is just me, out of pure luck, having it lying around like these transformers and this quad RCA connector right here. Well, this quad RCA connector is maybe overkill because I won't be using the top ones, but I will be using the bottom ones. Or I, you know, either way, I could use the top ones, but they're split uh, down the center for left and right. Unfortunately, top to bottom, they use a common ground, and with our circuit being bridged, I can't use that. When I was talking about transformers, I wanted to point out that these happen to be fairly close uh, as far as their ratio for primary and secondary, and you do want that so you're not picking up noise or losing volume. That's pretty, pretty much it. If you happen to have some that don't have quite as close a ratio, it's up to you which way you want to put that on there, but you can use either way. To go through it, we just have these four wires right here coming from the outputs and going straight to the RCA connectors. These are inputs from our transformers going to our, our DC bias pass cap so that we're not getting any DC in. This is the standby that's driven high with the 1K ohm or 100K ohm resistor and then the filter capacitor. This is on what they call out as the supply voltage rejection pin and it's more filtering built into the chip itself. Obviously this is our main filter cap and our power indicator with our 10K resistor in series with our LED just right across the, the power rails. I'll point out that the power rails on this board obviously are positive and ground up here and positive and ground down here and just linked with these two wires. Uh, finally we have our little ceramic 1.1 microfarad uh, filter caps that are closer to the chip. This is really a simple circuit. The only thing I haven't talked about is the uh, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack that I had lying around and that's again really simple, nothing big about it. Really easy to set up. Now let's take a quick listen to it and then we'll take a look at it on the oscilloscope as well. Okay, with the speakers hooked up, we'll take a quick listen. These aren't going to have great bass response and neither is my microphone. But as you can see, they're just simply plugged straight into these RCA connectors. I'm playing a bit of a recording from Deadmau5. I like Deadmau5, but you'll be able to hear the quality. Right now I do have this powered and even close up. Can't really hear any noise with this power supply, so it's filtering quite well. Anyways, Give this a quick play. It's nice and clean. It does get very loud. And very quiet. Tracks really nice. Here's our oscilloscope. As you can see, our sine waves coming through quite cleanly. I've got basically a signal sweep coming from YouTube feeding into this. Our blue is our output, our yellow is our input. Input uh, yellow is running at 20 millivolts per division. Blue is at 100, so we've got a five to one ratio here. You can see it's tracking pretty well, although it is a little bit off on phase. You may also be able to hear in the background, it's nice and clean and clear. Some of you may even recognize this oscilloscope as the one I modified in the first video, and hey, it still works, so great. Finally, after we're done here, we'll take a look at this on the perf board. I just want to demonstrate the signal coming out of it. it looks very clean. All right, here we have the perf board that I'm going to use. Again, this is just something I had lying around and happened to be uh, extra from another project I was working on. I did a layout just so I could follow it and double check it as I'm going along. The wiring will probably not look quite that way. Just wanted to give you a heads up that I'm actually going to be doing the wiring first because the, the heat sink it sits right on the board, so I can't actually run wires underneath it. That means I'm going to have to run wires between the pins. So I'm going to run the wires first and then set that in and, and solder it down. And I'm going to also put the places on here, or put the pieces on here, and mark out where everything goes first, just so I have a good layout. Here we go.
Well, that's finally all soldered up. I guess now we have to power it and see if it works or blows up. What are the chances, right? Well, the light came on. Nothing's popping. Nothing's getting hot yet. That's a good sign. Let's go ahead and turn this around, plug in our speakers. Hopefully I got the left and right channel correct. I, I did try to check that. Hop on the computer here. All right, we're at a good level. Let's see what happens. And it works the first time. Oh man, after all that messing around, and we actually have sound. All right, I call that a success. Time to clean up this board, maybe cut it off, but for now, that's it. Okay, that was it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, the audio amplifier came out pretty well. I think it sounds pretty good and it's got good power. Let me know what you would have done differently with this. I would love to find that out. Also, as always, if you have any comments on the video itself, let me know. Put it in the comments, share it with others. And if you liked it, give it a like, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next one.